Ask away, you start. Do it, man. All right, let me just get my oh, cool. So what I wanted to find out from you is, um, since Superman is, you know, he's super powered by our yellow sun, and Krypton has a red one. So I was wondering in the show if there was going to be any kind of a superhuman element to that since we're kind of shifting the setting a little bit. If you could tell us about that. Yeah, sure. There, there will be, but it won't be, you know, coming from, like, Seg, Seg Ella, the star of our show, the, you know, our, our main character. But there will be uh, characters with powers in the show. Yeah. But it's not because of the yellow sun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Had a nerd moment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you say is the tone of the show? How would you describe it? The tone. Uh, it, it's you know it's it's a grounded world, even though it's on a, you know it's a, it's a very you know it's a sci-fi, very much a sci-fi show. Yeah. Uh, but it, it has it's it's a world that that you know is in the middle of a kind of a a, a, a really. The political climate there is, is uh, it, it, the Krypton's kind of tearing itself apart. It's become divided in, in classes. There's a, the, the underclass known as the Ranklers, and then there's the upper class or the, you know, the, the house of, of, you know, the house of Zod and the house of Baal, and, the, and they kind of live up, up in these kind of towers, and the Ranklers live below. So that that sort of political um, uh, and there's, there's there's a tension there that, that, that's really helpful it's interesting there's a difference in class then almost mm -hmm. so you're telling almost a difference in is that kind of what the story is, is a little bit like one class against each other that, that's that's kind of the that's the background that's the world that we're in and, it, and it's a big part of the storytelling yeah and I think that Seg Seg starts out as a member of that upper class and then he's um, cast down into the rankless and so he's really disconnected from the, the house of L and the, the, everything that, that kind of stands for so part of the journey of the show is him learning what that means what it is to be an L and, and the responsibility that sort of is, is associated with that and and, what, and the power of that kind of that symbol and he's a much more kind of rough and tumble sort of he's from the streets he's not he's he's not a hero you know and he he's um, very quickly thrust into a situation where he needs to become that, but that that's really the journey of, of, of the series is him growing, you know, it's a hero's journey, you know, and he has to sort of take all those steps that, we're, you know, that, we, that we sort of know in a hero's journey. Will there be any, like, familiar villains? Absolutely. Yeah. So, is there anybody you could maybe toss a couple out there for us? Or? Well, look, without being, getting into the, uh, the, the specifics of the villains, what I'll say is there's a... As a way to kind of get into the show, and I think one of the challenges I, I think a lot of prequels face is, you know, the, the, the sense that, well, we know how this story ends, Krypton is going to blow up, and that's the end, so why do I invest in that? Well, what we're doing with our show, and it speaks to the villains, is that there is a conspiracy to where, where some villains from present day Earth, 2017, have... Uh, Traveled back in time to Krypton of 200 years ago to try and prevent Superman's birth. So um, very quickly the show becomes, it's no longer about the events of the past, it's about, the stakes are about the here and now, about you know, the greatest hero on Earth who, or, or in the universe, and, and will, he, will he be born? Uh, and so it just, it, very, very early on it becomes a show where anything can happen. And at the you know at the forefront of all of that, uh, the villains who are kind of behind this conspiracy, and, and you know I think for obvious reasons I, I can't go into any more detail on in the specific, specifics of who they are, but it's a it's a very cool way to get into the into the show, and it, and it just kind of I think upends people's expectations of what the series is, is going to be. So you almost have two different stories going on there. You have that present day aspect, but you also have this path of redemption type aspect from the House of Bell. How long, for the redemption type story, how long do you kind of feel like you want to let that breathe before you sort of you hit that climactic moment? Do you want to let that breathe a little bit, or do you want to let that kind of stretch out? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I think I think that's the that's the that's the challenge of the show is knowing you know how far to play any of those things and and, and, you know, and I think it's 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 we have a we have a, a you know a pretty well thought out plan for how that should, should play um, and I think I think we want to you know we've got that great bond but we, 
ultimately we want people to invest in the characters of the show. So, so it's the character story, it's their personal em emotional character driven stories that I think is what people will end up coming back for, you know. So um, as much as as we all love uh, the big the big swings and the big um, you know uh, wild crazy plot moments, uh, they only work when we care about the characters, you know. And, and so um, yeah, so it's about really expanding those characters and building because a lot of the audience are going to be unfamiliar with, with you know a lot of these characters. So really growing them is, is a, a, an important part. Right. Very cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Cameron, much. I miss Constantine.